people ask me for advice regarding finding their first role and instead of messaging people always individually I thought I'd create this video to share some things regarding what I've learned online what I've learned from others and what I'll try to do is one offer tips and two give reasoning as to why I'm giving these tips it's my way of thinking and I hope it's going to be useful to you at least one thing I say the first thing would be around networking now I like to tell people to network I think it's good to have a lot of people to learn from um, you never know when you could find yourself in a situation where you need to look for a role so maybe not just your first role but maybe further down the line but then I want to kind of explain a bit as to why networking is helpful so the first the main thing is that it's about trust so let's say there's someone who works at a company you are eyeing up and um, they're presumably doing a good job so that person has earned the company's trust. If you were then to apply for the role through this person who is a current employee, then you're gonna have a better chance of at least getting an interview because the company is trusting the opinion of someone that they trust. So you're kind of uh, piggybacking off that. And what I've seen often happen is if you manage to get recommended by someone, you have a very high chance of at least getting that first interview with uh, with the recruiter um, or just um, you, you actually get a foot in the door to prove yourself and I think that's very valuable. But then when it comes to networking, I've then seen people do it in a way that let's just say could be improved. So then they would reach out and they'd start networking and kind of hope for results straight away. Whereas I've never really seen it work where you could reach out to people and then get recommended by someone. Um, what I have seen work is that you uh, build relationships over time and then later down the track you may reach out and say, hey, uh, I'm now in the market for a role. Do you know anything that would be a good fit? Uh, so if you're watching this video and you've, say, started your software testing education, for example, uh, then I would start meeting people and getting out there now i wouldn't wait until towards the end of my graduation back to networking another thing i would do in terms of meeting people is i wouldn't limit myself to testing events so if you think of networking you may first think of say testing conferences testing meetups and you know that's fair but another uh place to meet people where you could hopefully get that role is events where there are people who work with software testers uh, for example uh, developer meetups uh, meet up, um, agile meetups and so on and the reason for that is while you won't have uh, testers there um, you would have uh, like test adjacent roles so then those companies would have a high chance of hiring testers so if you meet say uh, an agile coach and you know you get talking and you know you mentioned you mentioned that you're going to be looking for a role soon. You just mentioned that you're a tester. Then when they realize um, that at some point they need someone, hopefully they think of you. So yeah, that's one thing I would also try and keep in mind. Taking a step back from networking, let's jump into uh, updating your LinkedIn profile. So someone reached out to me asking if I knew of any roles, and I had a quick look at the LinkedIn profile. I wasn't really planning to give feedback. I just. Uh, I was just a bit nosy and I saw it was pretty much blank had their name uh, had the job title and companies they've been at and like uh, two or three lines of their um, summary description there I then pointed out to them that I think it would help if they added more detail if you take it from, from the perspective of someone who is considering hiring someone or someone who's thinking oh is this person someone I'd like to like have in the the back burner for when we could have a role in the future then make it easy for that person to assess that uh, or, or to to see the skills that you have or to see what you have to offer because they're not because someone who is thinking of hiring someone isn't necessarily going to go out of the way to say oh um could you please add in all these details um do you have experience in this tool or do you have experience in this sort of environment um do, what did you learn in your training uh, what do you like about testing they're not going to come back to you with all these questions uh, uh, you, you want to save them time and energy by just providing all this useful information at the start 
kind of on the vein of LinkedIn profiles and and CVs. Pay attention to detail. Uh, do your best to proofread. The, the reason I state this is I think testers are kind of expected to have attention to detail. So if you are applying for a role where you're supposed to have attention to detail and then you've got a CV written with grammatical errors, with spelling mistakes, the formatting looks off, it just it doesn't really read nicely, it doesn't look particularly professional, then you're not really convincing a hiring manager or, um, or whoever is assessing your CV or LinkedIn profile that you have what it takes to do the job. Another thing I'd like to talk about is to think about risk from the employer side and how you can address it. So if, you, if you're new, but also I guess if you are just applying for a role in general, there's risk on both sides, right? So as a potential employee, you're taking a chance by, uh, by joining a new company, there's this unknown, and then the company is taking a chance on you by bringing you on. So, you know, there's, there's a risk on both sides. But let's focus on how we can make a company feel more comfortable bringing you on. So one common approach I've seen is an internship, and a great thing about an internship is that uh, you you get to try each other out, um, you, you get to see would, would I like to stay there, and the company gets to see uh, would I would we like to keep this person. It may be paid, may not be paid. Um, the fact if it's doesn't if it's not paid means um, it's less risk for the company. Uh, but then I understand not everyone can afford to work like 40 hours a week for no money. So it's not a very fair option to everyone, let's be honest. Uh, the second thing, though, is even if it were unpaid, there's actually quite a risk that the company takes on by bringing you in. Chances are the company is going to pair you up with someone who is valuable, someone who is great at helping people, is great at their job. So they're going to lose out on that productivity. So the, the price they pay could be one, in money, uh, and, but two, in also reduced productivity as someone else has to bring you on. You, one, as an internship, you could also think about some sort of fixed term arrangement um, or a fixed term contract, which can hopefully later be extended. I'm, I'm in Sweden, where they have strong labor laws. Uh, I'm in Sweden. I'm originally from New Zealand. Not quite as strong labor laws, but it's generally hard to get rid of someone who isn't performing. As I understand with a fixed term contract, you get to control risk in that way that if it's not working out, well, at least you only have a certain time period. Uh, there's also generally um, a, a trial period of some some point. So that's another way that risk is being controlled. Uh, but just remind yourself that the company is taking a chance on you as just as you're taking a chance with the company and try to answer the question of how you can show that you are a safe bet. The funny thing is kind of a little bit of a tangent. I have recommended to people uh, to blog, to, to share their knowledge, and it could be like an interesting way to find a role. And some people would say to me, oh, Nicola, like if a potential employer sees this, they might not want to hire me. And I'd say, that's true. But then would you really want to work at that place anyway? Uh, because if they disagree with what you've said, then maybe you don't quite align. And then the same goes with um, if you do align. So maybe a potential employer like looks you up and they say, oh, writing some interesting topics on uh, on agile testing, for example. And then you're lowering that risk by showing exactly what you think. You're showing more of you. You're you're becoming less of an unknown. Uh, so you lower the risk to employers that would hopefully be a good fit for you. And yes, you do risk driving certain employers away. But I would argue that these are the same employers that you probably wouldn't be happy at if you don't, if your values don't align. And they probably wouldn't be happy with you. So, you know, you've kind of um, eliminated each other Um early on and saved everyone time. Lastly, I would say manage your expectations. It's hard to get your first role. I've seen ads for like software testing education saying, oh, there are so many jobs for software testers. Um, there are, um, you know, the IT industry is booming. Uh, you know, come 
join us you know one of us one of us it's a bit like that that is true but there's like this little like terms and conditions like little like fine print and the fine print says that they generally want people with experience like that's where a lot of demand is but also from what I've seen is that a lot of employers want people who already have some knowledge and so not necessarily senior but the, as, as I talked about the, the cost or the price of bringing an internship where you lose like productivity of a senior person who would be bringing you on um, the companies aren't always willing to pay that price so just remember that the first role is the hardest and then once you got that foot in the door it it gets a lot easier anywho I know this was such a ramble I hope at least something I said was useful let me know in the comments if you have anything else to add to someone who's trying to break into the industry bye